the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every Locked day. On. Locked On. Locked, Locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. And joining me today, as always, is my co-host, Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. You can also listen to him on the Best Coast Boys podcast. Landon, what's going on, sir? Not much. Uh, another training camp day. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. before I head out, we got to talk about a, a, a signing that we missed in the uh, shuffle of all the other training camp news. So uh, one that we should maybe be excited about, or, or at least we're going to talk about it. So you are going out to practice today, then? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to make my way out uh, in, okay. I mean, here in about 10 minutes and see if I can make it. Okay. Uh, so that means that we'll on Wednesday we'll talk about the practice that, that, that Landon saw. Uh, all of the ins and outs of that, so make sure you guys are tuning in. So uh, I want to talk, Landon, today about a, a big signing that the Cowboys made, or yeah. depending on when you're listening to this, that are about to make, right? Uh, Malik Hooker, the safety from the Indianapolis Colts. The Cowboys liked him pre-draft in 2017. They obviously didn't get a chance to draft him. They had interest earlier this offseason, didn't sign him. Now, my biggest question to you is why? Why now? Why are they signing him four days into training camp? <clears throat> well, I, the only thing I can come up with there is that they must have had a very specific timeline. Uh, you know, th- we, like we, like you mentioned, they had had a meeting with him earlier in the year, around the same time. In fact, maybe even the same week that they had met with uh, Kazee. And, uh, you know, from everything we heard, it didn't sound like the medicals were there yet. It sounded like it was scary or it sounded like he wasn't quite on the same timeline that, that it sounded like because he is. And, and cause, uh, you know, to his credit, DeMonte Casey came back early mm-hmm. from his injury ahead of schedule. So, I mean, if anything, you know, uh, Hooker may have been a little bit behind schedule while well, because he because he was ahead of schedule. So, you know, and obviously his history with Quinn made him the kind of easy no brainer signing there. But I think the Cowboys were still interested, and they were keeping tabs. I mean, I, this is all speculation, but I, I mean, that's the really the thing that kind of makes sense to me now is that you know they must have clearly been interested in the player, but the medicals didn't work quite there yet. And now that some more time has elapsed, maybe that you know they've uh, he's he's gotten a little bit further along, and, and now the interest is renewed. I, I mean, I think that's the only reasonable expectation, unless. They thought they got to practice on day one and they saw their safety situation was just not up to par. And, hey, there's nobody else out there that could provide a boost to our secondary quicker than Malik Hooker if healthy. That That's a possible scenario. I'm just hoping that's not the case, right? I mean, I – it certainly could be. And look, I mean, we were at practice. We got you know reports from those days. And, and I was there the second day, not the first. Uh, so still a day before you know the, yep. the, the, the signing was announced. But – I don't know. I mean, it seems like there wasn't enough like uh, <laughs> absolute destruction of the pass defense to kind of warrant. But they don't you even know, have pads on yet. Yeah, exactly. So the, I guess to me, it's like this seems like this was more uh, uh, like an ag- almost agreed upon circle back. You know, like mm-hmm. hey, we're just not sure that you're you're ready yet. Like, why don't we circle back when you're a little bit further along in your recovery and see where you are. Uh, and, and then maybe we'll, we'll still be interested. I mean, because honestly, it seems like they they have been kind of in a holding pattern at safety since then. So, I mean, clearly. So we'll, we'll see exactly, right. uh, you know, if this was a, a reaction to or if this was uh, something that they had planned all along. So just really quickly touching on it from a, the, the Malik Hooker's perspective, right? Like he had other offers and there were some other teams interested. I believe it was just a week ago he met with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But mm. I wonder if if you are right and he just, just holding out to see what the Cowboys said. Because if he goes to a team like Pittsburgh, they already have their starting two safeties. I think there's certainly a quicker route to playing time in Dallas. And not only if you're playing with Dallas, it's a faster way to earn an, another contract, right? Because – you know, this is somebody who's only 25 years old. If he can stay healthy for 16 games or even let's say like 13 or 14 games and play reasonably well, it's not 
unthinkable that he could get a decent sized contract, you know, at this time next year. Right. So I, I wonder if that played into why he waited so long to sign as well. There's a pretty straightforward path to it. You know, him staying healthy and playing at a level that he had previously when healthy, there's a pretty yep. straightforward path for him playing his way into a, a contract either here or someplace else. Uh, but uh, next year, if he, you know, if he can just play up to what we know his ability is, I and mean, we haven't even got into that part of it yet. Yeah, we, we've into talk, next. Yes. We, we've talked to it before. We've talked about it before, but kind of, you know, to get into that, like, I think that that's, that's a very good thought by your, on your part, like that, that he clearly, you know, uh, could have looked at the situation and said, look, they they not only need me, but I know that if I do well, it's obviously going to be amplified because the Cowboys are, you know, mm -hmm. on TV all the time and, and con constantly in people's consciousness. So, so yeah, absolutely. I, I'm sure he parlay he's trying to parlay that into a big contract. Yeah, again, he's 25 years old. So if he can stay healthy and he can play well, he's going to get paid. Um, I want to talk about the player himself in just a second. Yeah. But before we do that, uh, let's tell you guys about Bet Online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season is in full swing, and you can track all of the action on Bet Online. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. All right, Landon, let's talk about Malik Hooker, the player, and not the injury part. We'll, we'll get to it in a second. But if Malik Hooker is healthy, what can he provide this Cowboys defense? Well, I mean, he's just an incredibly naturally gifted uh, you know, safety. I mean, he's just a guy. I mean, uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts, too, because – he was my favorite safety to ever uh, evaluate. I think I, he was coming out of college, you know, mm -hmm. he just like, he was, his skill set is so rare and just like, he has such natural ability as a ball hawking free safety. It's, it's it was kind of spooky. Uh, you, you watch his Ohio state tape and it's just like, he has an ability to get all the way across the field from, from, you know, either end and, and, and really cover ground. And clearly, you know, one of the more difficult things for free safeties to deal with is the change in, in hashes uh, and, and, and having to kind of deal with, 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 with how wide the field can get. Um, and, and so he's able to kind of go from sideline to sideline and make plays and, and just, you know, not only not giving up a bunch of big plays, but, but making plays on the football it was, you know, always around the football, making, uh, getting interceptions and you know he gets drafted, and, and it's always been an injury thing with him. That's yes. that's what Cowboys yes. fans need to deal with. Is that this guy? It's always been an injury thing, and 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 honestly, to me, it's like Malik Hooker is almost to injuries as Randy Gregory is to his uh, off-field issues, where he would miss long periods of time and then come back and st play magnificent, and you would see it, and you would be like, "Wow, it's still this guy." you worry about hooker now because he's had, he's continued to have these lower body injuries and, and you wonder even at 25, at what point, like, is this going to have a cumulative effect here? But when he's healthy and when he's right and when he's on the field, he has a natural ability like Randy Gregory, a natural talent to specifically play the, the position that he plays mm -hmm. uh, that, that is, that is uncommon and, and rare because that position is a very, difficult one to have the you know the kind of combination of athletic skills and and, and mental processing to, to yes. play well at and he has it so i want to talk about the college prospect for a second because you are right like we've seen some really good prospects at safety come into the draft whether it's Thurwin james or jamal adams yeah. but those are more kind of hybrid safeties that can play strong can play free if needed right in terms mm -hmm. of just a pure free safety it's been a long, long time since I've seen somebody as good as Malik Hooker. So he only started uh, 13 games in college, all during his sophomore year. Yeah. During that during that season in 2016, he had seven interceptions, and yeah. I would classify like five of those interceptions, if I remember like correctly, like rare. These aren't ones that are like just getting tipped up into his arms. These are yeah. ones of him breaking on routes and you know just anticipating where the throw is. Like it, his instincts are rare. Yeah. The injury part, as you mentioned, is scary. And I pulled it up, Landon, because I knew we were going to talk about it today. I, I've got yeah. it here for us. I'll, I'll read right through it. 
his last <laughs> 2016 Ohio State, he had double sports hernia. Uh, in 2017, he had a surgery to repair a torn labrum. 2017, he tore his ACL and MCL at the end of the 2017 season. 2018, he had a hip injury. He missed a game. He had another hip injury later in the season, missed a game. 2019 in the playoffs, he had a foot injury. 2019 during the regular season, he tore his meniscus. So, like, this is somebody who is always hurt. And it, you you're wondering like at the age of 25, like, are we already seeing a very compromised version version because he's now coming off? Is it an ACL injury? Something like that. I thought it was an Achilles. Wasn't it Achilles? Achilles. Yeah. Maybe it is. Yeah. yeah, I think it's Achilles injury, which I didn't even mention. So like this is, it's, it's rough and you have no idea what type of player we're getting anymore. But I, I do know when he's fully healthy and I have never, I have no idea if he's ever going to be fully healthy again. It's not un- inconceivable to say that he could be the best free safety in football. Like he has that talent ability. Yeah. Like that's a possibility. Like that's the yeah. thing is that, you know, that's a lot of Will McClay's philosophy with these guys is that it's not just, you know, everyone says, oh, it's former first round picks. It's not just that. It's guys who, if you hit, they're big hits. You know, like it's guys that, you know, yes. that make it worth the, the risk of, you know, dealing with. And, and the way you handle this is the way they have already handled it is, you know, they don't have any one great answer, but now they have at least three solid answers mm-hmm. at safety, one of which, you know, could be injury prone. And then you're still hoping that a guy like um, Mikamu can, can like can can make a, 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 a jump and play the position well. You still know that you can have Jordan Lewis come in and play some snaps there if you needed him to, um, you know, and, and say what you will. The coaches like Darian Thompson a lot. So, I mean, we've seen the Cowboys have success with these type of players before. We've also seen them fail. Like, I, I, yeah. I was trying to think of some guys that, like, were really hurt coming into their career or, like, for most of their career, then they go to Dallas and play well. I mean, I think, like, a good example is, like, Mark Colombo, like, in the early 2000s, yeah, exactly. right? exactly. Somebody who we knew was talented, just never stayed healthy, stayed healthy in Dallas and parlayed into it into a pretty good career. Um, we've also seen it turn into nothing, right? Um, I'm thinking 2013. Everett Brown, they signed a defensive lineman. Ernie Sims, you know, a first round, a top 10 pick. Uh, yep. Some of these guys just don't work out. But if it's going to cost you nothing and all it costs you is a training camp roster spot, why not, Landon? Like, yep. why not take a chance on Blake Cooker? And, and there's something to be said that having belief, uh, a stronger belief in your medical team than than and your in your training team than other 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 organizations, which yep. you know I think the Cowboys do have an argument there that they have an incredible medical team and incredible training staff. But so yep. let's try to leverage that into, you know, finding a diamond in the rough. So we were talking about a couple of days ago uh, during our safety preview that they were short a guy at, at safety, right? Like. You and I are not Darian Thompson fans. Apparently, the Cowboys coaching staff is. I'm not a fan of J. Ron Curse. I think you're a little bit higher on him than than, than I am. But I, it just felt like they were a guy short. And I'm not sure Malik Hooker is the most reliable guy, but I think it now gives you some healthy competition. And how do you see that playing out over the next basically month and a half as we get ready for where we won against Tampa Bay? Well, we got to see where he is. You know, I mean, I, I think – the, the spectrum is incredibly wide for this. And we talk about this all the time. Like, you know, what's the, what's the, the floor and the ceiling for these guys. And, and I think for a guy like hooker, we've talked about the ceiling. It's, you know, we can't see it from here. If he yep. plays to his ability, yep. the floor could be, this guy doesn't have anything left and he gets cut before, you know, the first round of, of cut downs. Um, I, I think that, you know, the likelihood is that he's going to come in and look pretty good. Uh, but they're still probably going to continue to use a rotation of these guys uh, and that, you know, he'll be uh, have, you know, featured in a rotation of, of safeties. Uh, the, the, you know, what you can hope for is that he has some stability in training camp, able to stay on the field and can be your starting free safety, who is a plus at least plus out average, you know, free safety uh, who can at least, you know, help the, uh, the rest of a young secondary uh, you know, maybe have some teeth, so you so that so mm-hmm. the offenses aren't trying to constantly take advantage of it, and maybe a guy who can help, you know, both in the run game and the pass game because he's a good run player too. So, do you think the plan is to make Hooker the starting safety again, assuming he's healthy, and have KZ rotate in, or do you think it's the the opposite? I think 
I, I think on, I honestly believe that I think it's get the, get him in and let's see, like, you know, I mean, why, I mean, and, and look from what I've seen so far, and we said it, I think on yesterday's pod, it, it's, there's a, there's a clear matchup based kind of defense mm -hmm. seemingly going on here. I saw several different packages going against the ones and, and not just like, Oh, let's rotate here, here and there. It's like both defensive and safeties, and cornerbacks were all rotating different groups. So it, I think it's – there really are trying different combinations. So maybe you've got a package where you're going to play a lot of shell coverage and you keep both Kazee and Hooker back there, and then you've got a third safety on the field and Donovan Wilson doing some interesting stuff. So uh, I, I just think that, you know, they're going to get these guys out and see how it is. I, I think that if if Hooker plays well, they're, they're going to try to feature him a lot because they know he's a playmaker. And, and if he earns that, then I, I don't think they're going to hesitate in giving him a whole bunch of snaps if they think he can handle it. So, okay. <laughs> a part, another part of this Billy Cooker conversation that's really interesting is that depending on the grades that you like to look at, like he's had one really good season. That was in 2018. It's also the season he played the most snaps. 2019, it was a little drop off, still quality play. 2020, when he did play, it wasn't great. So, if Casey and Hooker are both healthy, and let's say they're both, you know, 100%, Hooker's just the better player, right? Even though Casey has maybe had a little bit more success in the NFL. Yeah, I would say as far as like natural athlete and, and just kind of talent. I mean, look, I mean, I don't know how much clearer we can put it. There are very few people that are better naturally at playing the free safety position in the NFL when he's healthy, period. I, In my opinion, uh, even now, I think – uh, but I, I, you know, look, I, I, a lot rust and an and injury has taken a toll on him to a large degree. So it's hard to kind of cal you know, gauge exactly where yeah. he is. But I, but yes, I think if you're asking kind of all things being equal, who's likely if they look the same, who would you think that I, I would give the nod to Malik Hooker just because again, the ceiling is I think a lot higher. The potential of him being more of a playmaker, I think, yeah, I think it's probably still higher yeah. than Kazee because I think he's just. He's a more well-rounded player He's a more as instinctive well. Player too. I, yeah, and that too. I mean, Casey has made a lot of plays in the NFL with the Falcons. I just think Cooker still has that rare ability to just know where the ball is going. So, we're going to keep mentioning this all the time too, Landon. Like having a 17-game schedule, yeah. you're going to need both these guys, and frankly, you might need another guy as well. Like you, you need as much depth as possible. I like that the Cowboys are bringing in this, these guys. Like it just makes more sense to have. Malik Hooker in your training camp, then a down the roster guard that has no chance to make the team. Like, give me all the guys that can actually contribute rather than just, you know, whoever. Uh, Play a bunch of guys on defense. Yeah. Total, just rotate a bunch of them. You know, yeah. like, who cares who's the starter? If maybe yeah. there's three the starting like 11 equal is snaps. so overrated on defense. And I, I can't yeah. stress that enough. Like, who opens games does not matter. I think Bill Belichick is known for this. Like, he'll use 19 guys over the course of a game on defense, right? Yep. Because you know, there's going to be certain, you know, plays and personnel groupings that just make sense for different guys to be in there. And I'm hoping, and that's what we've seen so far, that that's the way that Dan Quinn is going to go as well. Um, let's take one more quick break to tell you guys about rockauto.com. It's a family business serving auto parts to customers online for over 20 years. They have everything from engine control modules and brake parts, motor oil, and even new carpet. Whether it's for your classic or your daily driver, get everything you need in a few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. The rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brand specifications and prices that you prefer. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, Locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com today. All right, so the Malik Hooker signing isn't quite official yet. I believe it's going to happen late Tuesday afternoon, maybe Wednesday, just depending on when this uh, COVID protocol stuff goes through. But uh, is there any other guys out there that you think the Cowboys should be interested in bringing in now that we're in training camp? Is there any spots that you feel like need an extra guy or two? Well, I mean, I saw you know yesterday at practice or, yeah, Sunday at practice, I saw uh, – or no – yeah, two days ago of practice, I was uh, I saw Tristan Hill out on the field, you know, mm -hmm. not in a boot. Um, he's not in the he wasn't on the cords either. Um, so 
I, I wonder where he is and I wonder as far as recovery and I wonder at what point, you know, we keep kind of thinking, hearing a little bit about Geno Atkins uh, being, being uh, tied to the Cowboys as, his, as he starts to recover from his knee injury mm-hmm. um, or no, I'm sorry. It was a shoulder. Um, yep, shoulder. Yep. And uh, I think, you know, I, so I, I wonder if that's the, not the next, you know, kind of bigger name that might get called is, is, you know, let's really see how, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, it's just like you see, if, if Tristan Hill doesn't come back quick enough, or if there's a setback there, or if, if any one of these defensive linemen, interior guys get hurt, uh, if if Atkins isn't the next guy that's on the Rolodex to, to get called. So I'll, I'm glad that you brought up Tristan Hill because this is something we haven't talked about yet. I believe it was Michael Gelkin from the Dallas Morning News on Saturday or Sunday. I don't remember the date, but he sent out a tweet that basically said Tristan Hill's not going to be ready for week one. Like he's just not going to be healthy enough, which. As a little bit surprising to me, but then I thought about it. What if the plan is to keep him on the PUP list for the first six weeks? And that way, you know, let's, let's see what the defensive line rotation looks like. It gives Tristan Hill an extra month and a half to get ready, work out his conditioning, saves a roster spot. I wonder if that's not their plan. And maybe they will bring in another guy like Geno Atkins. But I, just seeing that tweet from Gelka makes me wonder, maybe they're not – trying to rush Tristan Hills back as much as we think. Yeah, that's a good thought, honestly, because uh, I, I I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, you kind of need these guys in waves, and, um, you know, at that point you will have gotten a good evaluation on some of these down roster defensive tackles. So when you need to bring uh, Tristan Hill back onto the on the team, you kind of have an idea of, of where the lay of the land is in, the, in that, ro- in that uh, position group. And, and, you know, you can figure out if you want to bring him back or if you just, you know, I don't know. At that point, you can make a decision, but you know, having too many defensive tackles is definitely not going to be a problem. So, right. um, I, I think you know, Geno Atkins makes a lot of sense because of the, of the, the need and and what the position he pl- plays. Um, and I think that you know, if you bring him back and, and you hit with Geno Atkins as well, I mean, suddenly you may have a decent little uh, defensive tackle rotation inside. And, and when you you know you match that up with what's happening at the defensive end position. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean that could definitely be a a, a, a a recipe for success. That does feel like the one spot that could add a guy, right? Like I, I we, yeah. we talked about this when we did all of our positional previews. I feel like the offense is pretty much set. Like maybe, oh, maybe yeah. you bring in a veteran running back for the third guy, but I don't see that. Other than or, that, or maybe a spot. swing tackle, maybe if like you really like somebody who gets released, but I, that does not, not it doesn't seem to very likely either because yeah. it seems like the coaching staff likes Terrence Steele. Ty Nischke is somebody who they're a big fan of. So defensive tackle, maybe defensive end if you want somebody to be that third or fourth guy. But I, I think. Listen, Geno Atkins, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like Dr. Yeah. Cooper did a surgery. believe he's working out in Dallas. The Cowboys obviously have a need there. That's the next one to monitor. Um, I guess we will keep you guys updated if we hear any uh, more information. Really quickly, before you go, um, do you want to comment on the Aaron Rodgers situation in Green Bay? No, just that I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not a Green Bay fan. I mean, honestly, that just seems like a disaster to deal with and, and – you know, da- the, even even the worst moments of the Dak stuff, you know, like with the, the the contract, it never got this ridiculous. I mean, the egos are out of control, and it's not just not just Rogers, but you know, in Green Bay too. That's just that's just it's just ridiculous. It's did ridiculous. you see the report that he's demanding that Randall Cobb be traded to Green Bay? I did see that. I did see that, and and, and you know what? I did feel a twinge of of needing to defend Randall Cobb from all these people. Like Randall Cobb's wash, and I'm like, no, well, he was pretty Randall good. Cobb's- Randall Cobb was pretty good with Dallas, and then he got offered, you know, ridiculous. Yeah. Why would I ever turn this down? Money by the Texans for no good reason at all, and that's not his fault. So, no. uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, I hope Randall has a good career, but uh, you know, I, I'm not. I can't yeah. say the same for the Packers. I, I think Rogers. Packers fans are hoping for the story beginning, right? Like Aaron Rodgers goes out, and wins the Super Bowl, and then he moves the last on. dance like, stuff is ridiculous. Yeah, because I mean, he's about four championships short of of of. of uh, <laughs> Of uh, Jordan. Jordan. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Packer fans, shout out to Packer fans, you guys are the worst. Uh, that is it for today's show. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, you can uh, download the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you're following Landon at McCool BCB, he's going to be out at camp tweeting out great things. So, uh, be sure to follow him. You can follow me at Marcus underscore Mosier, you can follow the Locked On account at Locked On Cowboys, and we'll see you guys next time.